what's going on YouTube how's everybody doing long time no see I have not had a video out in quite a while been real crazy busy these last couple weeks um, and but I have been picking up I've been consistently picking up I've been enjoying the low prices if you guys follow my channel um, you know that I collect art bars older rounds vintage bars vintage rounds you know of all shapes and sizes I do have a soft spot for the art bars and this is going to be part one of a two-part recent pickups video. I've uh, been hitting it pretty hard. Continue to be hitting it pretty hard uh, with the low prices. And, you know, it just what I come across is what I tell everybody. I don't really hunt things down when things come up that I enjoy. I think it's there's good value there. I will grab them. So, other thing I want to say before I start this video is that uh, it's going to be a little bit longer of a video because I have quite a few there uh, here and I'm going to share them with you because I know a lot of you don't have LCSs and places where you can pick things up like this and I've had a lot of people tell me they enjoy these videos. So uh, grab yourself a drink or something to snack on. It may be a little bit longer. I'll try to go through it quickly. Um, also, I'd like to mention, you know, I, I show a lot of things in my channel, but I don't usually talk strategy too often because it usually just brings a lot of you know, uh, a lot of drama or a lot of grief to channels, you know, people don't agree, which, you know, is perfectly fine. But what I will tell people, you know, I do collect larger bars as well. You see a lot of 10 ounce poured, five ounce poured, things like that on my channel, the older bars, and we all love to find those. But what I want to tell everybody right at the beginning of this video is that don't sleep on the one ounce bars. Um, there's a lot of value here. You know, if you go out there and you find yourself a nice Inglehard waffle back and you're, you're excited that you got a $230 10, <clears throat> 10 ounce bar, I get excited at those too. But these one ounce bars, I'm going to show you an example here. Uh, here's a collector piece that I paid $16.50 for. The last one sold on eBay for $97. Now, not all these bars are going to sell for $97, but you do come across nice pieces that are rare from time to time and it makes it worth it and the other thing that makes it worth it for me personally is that i pick these up i don't pay premiums on them i meaning if i was going to go into my lcs say hey i'm just a guy i just want weight i'm going to go in there and buy the cheapest stuff that i possibly can well that's what i do too i just buy this instead of buffaloes i would pay the same thing for buffaloes as i'm paying for these so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start. Some of these I'll go by a little bit quicker because they're, you know, pieces that you may have seen before. Here's a Liberty Rarities Mint. It's pretty cool. It's got a concave design to it. Um, we'll go through these. Here is a Season's Greeting. Normally I don't pick up the holiday rounds or the bars too often. However, if they are older and they are from a known mint like Golden State Mint, I will grab them if they're cheap and I don't have them in my collection. So I went ahead and scooped that one up. Here is a just a random older uh, round out of the 80s, uh, an apple orchard place, um, probably not well known, but I went ahead and grabbed it. Here's a Franklin Roosevelt from 1982, just a nice clean round that I picked up cheap. Here we have an energy dollar. I did find one of these prior. I haven't uh, had a chance to throw this one in the capsule yet, um, but this one is pretty cool from Houston, Texas. And uh, I think, what, what we got here? Uh, Texas Mint. This one's a little bit older. Yep, 1981. Next, we have a Freedom, Peace, and Truth from National. Uh, national Commercial. Um, I have quite a few National. I may have this round. I wasn't sure, but I went ahead and grabbed it. Again, here we are with the holidays. Yes, it's Easter coming up. It's a 1973. Again, normally I, I uh, avoid these or I don't usually pick them up. However, I'm learning, just like a lot of people may oversee the one ounce bars, I'm learning that some of these holiday older bars do command a premium. Um, so you need to check them out and do your homework and figure out which ones are desirable. Here we have another Easter 1982. There you have Jesus on the cross. This is from the Madison Mint. Next up. In the beginning of this video, I'll have a few holiday bars, and then they're going to get better, okay? Uh, here's a Mother's Day from 1974. Again, nice clean bar. Madison Mint. Here we just uh, recently celebrated St. Patrick's Day. Here's from 1974. Again, if I find these, they're older. They're in nice condition. As you can see, these are very beautiful condition. Must have been in somebody's collection for a long time, not beaten around. I will grab them. Madison Mint. Uh, here is another thing. Um, this is a, I believe, the first annual, yep, first annual Father's Day 
this is from the Hamilton Mint also. I don't tend to pick up the gilded bars. I only have very few in my stack. I just thought this was a neat looking bar, so I went ahead and scooped it. This next one we have here is a Veterans Day from 1973. You know, um, it, it's hard not to like that, that bar. It's just a beautiful bar, again, from the Madison Mint. Uh, next, we have a Liberty USA. Of course, you notice this one, don't you? This is a Norfed dollar. Um, these are collectible. I'm not going to go into it because I just have too many pieces, but these are beautiful. They come in all different sizes and denominations. And um, that, if you're not familiar with the Norfed dollars, go ahead and look that one up. You'll, you'll see that it's an interesting read, what happened with the, the gentleman that uh, uh, made those rounds. Here we have a cool Alaska, the Great Land round. This is from the Oxford Mint. have quite a few pieces from the Oxford Mint. They were around for, for quite some time, and they have some cool pieces. Uh, next up, just a generic Inglehard. We'll skip over that one. Here we have a Southeast Refining that, you know, more common. You've seen these. I have a few more Inglehards over here. I'm not going to go through them. They're the same ones as what you just saw. I have another four of them sitting there. Here we have an Israel uh, 1973 anniversary bar. This is from the uh, U.S. Silver Corp. Nice clean bar there. All right, where are we at? Here we have a Simmons Refco Metals. I have quite a few of these in the mint seal. Um, probably 8, 9, 10 or so. I'm going to keep picking them up every time I see them. These command a nice premium, especially when they're nice and clean like this and in a mint seal. I like that. I like that bar a lot. Uh, here we have another Israel from 1973. There were quite a few anniversary bars uh, for Israel in 1973. I have a few different variations. This one happens to be from the Mother Load Mint. Next up, we have a Labor Day bar, a salute to America's labor force. This one's pretty cool. Again, from 1973 and from the Mother Load Mint. 1973 was a great year for silver. You'll see many, many of these older bars with that date. Here is another Oxford one ounce bar. This is uh, Alaska, kind of cool. There's different variations of this one. This one has the Oxford print on the back. Next up, we have an American Eagle. This is from the Worldwide Mint. I think this is uh, right about 1980, 81 is when this bar was made. It's just a, a nice bar. The Eagle has uh, some real nice detail. Um, enjoy that one. Next up, we have a Bob White. Just a, just a nice, beautiful old art bar. This one is from the Justice Men. As you can see, it's serialized. Nice, clean bar there. This one is the Jacques Cortier. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Mint from Toronto, Canada. This one has a nice premium on it as well. It's just a nice, clean bar. And uh, I did not have one of those in my collection yet. This is a saber-tooth cat, California State Fossil, 1974, number one. This also has a decent premium on it. This is from the U.S. Silver Corp, and as you can see, this one is actually serialized. Um, pretty nice bar, pretty cool. They have a few different, uh, few different animals. I don't know if they have all, they probably have all 50 states. I've seen quite a few of these, but I have not seen this one in particular. I went ahead and picked that up. I also did find a couple of Inglehard Industries, one ounce, uh, these are, I believe, the first first issue of these Inglehard one ounce press. There's different variations as far as print, font, and serialization on these. You can find out information on all Inglehard bars on allinglehard.com. They have lots of information regarding Inglehard, and they're starting to add other refiners and mints in there. So it's it's a wealth of information. If you have Inglehards, you're not really sure what they are, how old they are. Um, as you, but you can go on there and uh, people send in pictures. It, it's a very, very useful website. So I was very happy to find those. Those obviously have some nice premium on them as well. Here's a San Diego Zoo from 1973, world's largest. Very cool. This is from the U.S. Silver Corp. It's got a little bit of premium. I mean, all of these, to be honest with you, have a little bit of premium. Yes, you'd have to go to the secondary market or find collectors to buy them from you. But again, if you are buying them close to spot, then... You know, it is what it is. If you have time to sell them, if not, you're just going to be sending them back to the LCS light and you'll get the same amount for is buffaloes. So you might as well have fun with it is the way I look at it. So here is a Makata Goldsmith Limited. 
This is pretty cool. This one has nice, nice premium on it as well. The Chartered Mint. I did not have one of those in my collection. Was happy to find it. Here we have a famous Concord Stage. This is from the Motherload Mint as well. They've had lots of art bars, lots of cool ones as, uh, as well. Here we have a couple more holiday rounds that are just fun. Here's a 1973. It was nice and clean, and it was from the U.S. Silver Corp., so I went ahead and scooped it. Here we have a Be My Valentine's 1973 as well. You see a theme there. This one's just a blank back, um, just a cool bar. Here we have another 1973. I love you. I know these ones aren't as exciting. This is from the Crabtree Mint, so that's why I picked it up. A lot of times when I see these older, you know, just generic bars or holiday bars, if I do see a certain mint that's uh, collectible or they, you know, command a premium, I will scoop them. Um, here is Happy Easter. Uh, just another older bar. This is also from the United States Silver Corp. I um, was happy to add that into my collection. Uh, all right, now we're going to go down here. I did find myself another Maple Inglehard, uh, one troy ounce flat bar, of course, and these do command a very nice premium as well. And another thing that I'll tell everybody as far as Inglehard goes, I love Inglehard. I'm a big Inglehard collect collector. I have quite a bit of it in my stack, and I will be doing an Inglehard collection video eventually. <clears throat> People get excited when they see these Inglehards that go for $18. And then they don't, uh, you know, care at all if they see something like this that actually probably sells for twice as much. That's what I'm saying. If you want to get into this, if you think this is a fun idea, if you enjoy just adding weight but want to have some fun with it, do some research and check these, these older bars out. And again, it's fun to come home and search these up and see if you scored. Um, it's just a lot of fun in my opinion. It's one of the uh, things that I have the most fun with when I stack. And I just want to share that with everybody. Here we have a, a piece on Earth. As you can see, the old dub there on the front. This is from the Mount Everest Mint, 1974. Very beautiful bar there. I really like that one. All right, we're moving on. Here is uh, an Arger Chiasso. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. It's just a generic bar. Nothing too special about that one. Um, here we have a Royal Canadian Mounted Police Bar. A uh, very pretty bar. I like this one a lot. It comes from the Great Lakes Mint. Um, they've made a lot of uh, one ounce bars, art bars as well. And they got a lot of nice ones out there. Here we have a USCE. I couldn't remember if I had any of these in my collection or not, so I went ahead and grabbed one. Um, moving on up, we have a Hosser Miller. These are some beautiful bars here. <clears throat> these, uh, I did pick up three, and there are, I did find a variation. Um, they have a standard Hauser Miller back. However, like other companies like Johnson Matthey and Inglehard, there were companies and businesses that had them make silver bars for them. So this one in particular is from 1987, and it's a wear dated carpet. Um, some of these different variations can be more collectible, more desirable, depending on what it is and, and how rare it is. So I was happy to find that as well. Moving on. We have a the beginning of Generation of Peace, just an older art bar there, as you can see, that looks like President Nixon, um, serialized on the back. We'll move on. A um, couple more Inglehards. I got these scattered. I uh, got some frosted backs. Um, the horizontal varieties, I like those. They just look nice and clean. This next one's pretty cool looking. I really enjoy the, the design on this one. This is from the ANA um, convention. I think it says the 80th. 88th there but uh, the ANA usually makes like uh, bars or, or rounds or what have you every time they have the large a large convention this one's from 1974 and it's in beautiful condition just a very very neat design there with the state with all the, the raised coins on there thought that was a very nice uh, design next up we have an Athena goddess of wisdom 1973 this one has some beautiful rainbow toning on it. It doesn't come off well on my camera with my poor lighting right now. But this is also from the Great Lakes Mint. Um, really enjoy that one. That one's pretty. This next one here, we have, um, uh, this is, yeah, the log cabin. I forget what it's called. The Cog Railway. There we go. The America the Beautiful, that's another series of art bars where there's tons of them in there. Um, they're serialized on the edge. This is from Hamilton Mint as well. There are just so many. That Another thing about collecting the art bars is you will never run out of art bars to collect. There's there's literally countless, countless of them uh, that were made 
countless numbers of them were made. Here we have a Ulysses S. Grant, excuse me, um, Centennial. Uh, I did not have that in my collection. Here is a New York. This one's from the Mother Load Mint, just an older art bar. Uh, here we have, this one was kind of interesting. This one is the Committee of Vigilance of San Francisco. Something a little bit different. I don't believe I had one of these. Um, it says Fort Gunny Bags. It is serialized on the back. Um, it is a pretty cool looking, pretty cool looking old uh, bar. And it, and it does command a decent premium. I, I came to find out once I looked it up. Here we have a high wheeler. Just uh, a lot of these I don't have in air tights. Now you're probably asking why you're putting all this stuff in air tights. Well, number one, I collect them. Number two, I buy 250 air tights at a time. So I get them for, you know, I'm not spending a dollar or a dollar fifty like a lot of people do on their tights. I'm spending a fraction of that. And some of these longer bars do not fit in air tights. So I just happen to have some of these extra uh, SA flips. So I tossed them in there. This one also comes from the Great Lakes Mint 1973. Up next, we have a President Kennedy, uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. There we go. This is an older one. Same thing, Centennial. Not sure what that is down there. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Um, I think it says Bay. I could be mistaken. You guys will have to let me know if you know out there what that says, or I'll look, I'll look later with my loop. Next up, we have a beautiful bar. This is a Mayflower bar. Put a picture of this up on my Instagram Look uh, like this where it looked like the sunset, like the ship was sailing for the sunset. This has a very high um, catalog price, a uh, collector catalog price. And this one, um, Lloyd's LTD, 1973. Now there is a, there are books out there. I will say that there are collector books out there that show mintage numbers on bars. They show rarity, um, old price guides. However, they have been out of print for a long time and they cost a ton of money. That's why a lot of people don't have them and don't have a lot of information on these. There are people out there with those catalogs and you know they basically have a, have a leg up because they, they know what's rare or what may turn out to be more valuable down the road. Hopefully somebody will reprint one of those catalogs and we can get our hands on them and it may end up uh, increasing the price on these in the future. Completely speculative, you know, just, just my opinion. But uh, there was another, uh, sorry, Metal Arts, just a basic, standard, generic round. Here we go, here's another Israel, 25th anniversary. Again, there were many of those made. Here we have a 60th anniversary, Labor Day, 1973. Again, Great Lakes Mint. They had a cool image there, I really like that. Um, here, oh, we, oh, I'll share this one with you since I didn't talk about it. This one's the Houston Arrows. That's the one that I uh, stated that went for quite a bit for the last sale on eBay. Um, pretty nice bar there. This one reminds me of a Bach or a Bosch or however you pronounce it. I had a gentleman from the company that actually worked there contact me once and told me it was pronounced Bach, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna correct anybody because I really don't know. So there it is. Next, we have a, a more generic, just National Refiners of Sayers with the serialization on there, blank back. Next one up here, we have a Golden Gate Bridge from the Hamilton Mint. That's a pretty bar. Um, here we have, uh, it says United States of America half dollar. These are from the Washington Mint. They made many variations of these. I have lots of them, tons of different ones. I'd like to find out how many different variations were on the back. And today, we have this one, and I'll go over these quickly because um, they're all the same with just different variations. There's Liberty, same same front. Um, here we have um, Standing, and here we have the Indian. So that's it, guys. I appreciate it. If you hung in with me, this was a long video, but I hope you uh, enjoyed it. There was a lot of stuff there. Go ahead and give you a little bit of an overview of... What I scooped over the last couple, couple three weeks as far as art bars and, and collectible rounds go, I think there's like uh, 68 or 70 some odd right there that will fit nicely in my collection. So if you made it this long, again, I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to have a lot more content coming soon. Part two I may out, have out today as, with this video or it may come out tomorrow, but keep an eye out for it. It, uh, it has some nice, very cool... Uh, new stuff, old stuff. There's uh, plenty of vintage, highly collectible stuff, in my opinion, that I picked up recently for 
for some really nice prices. And if you like that type of stuff, tune in and check it out. So see you on the next one.